This training video guides you through the steps to successfully conduct a test using Neogen's Veritox Max for Xarelanone test kits and the StatFax 4700 Microwell Reader. This presentation serves only as a visual guide to the written materials supplied with the test kit. To ensure accuracy in the performance of this test, please read and follow the test's written instructions in their entirety. To conduct the test, you will also need an agri-grind or bun grinder, a scale capable of weighing 5 to 50 grams, sample collection cups with lids, sample collection tubes with caps, filter syringes, Wattman No. 4 filters, or mini centrifuge with micro centrifuge tubes, a tube rack, timer, rocket shaker, microwell reader with a 650 nanometer filter, 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, 12 channel pipetter and tips, 100 microliter pipetter and tips, wash bottle, reagent boats, distilled or deionized water, max two aqueous extraction packets. The test kit should be stored in a refrigerator set at two to eight degrees Celsius. Do not freeze the kit. Prior to use, warm the kit to room temperature. This typically takes about two hours. Commodities tested should have a pH of six to eight. Excessively acidic or alkaline samples should be adjusted. For instructions on adjusting the pH, please contact your Neogen representative. To prepare the sample, begin by gathering all the materials required. The sample to be tested should be collected according to accepted sampling techniques. See the FGIS sampling protocol or contact your Neogen representative. Obtain a representative sample and grind so that at least 95% of the ground material passes through a 20 mesh sieve. The particle size should be about the same as espresso. It is best to grind a minimum of 100 grams of your sample. Weigh out 10 grams plus or minus 0.1 gram of sample in a sample collection cup. Add the contents of one Max 2 aqueous extraction packet to the cup. Add 50 milliliters of distilled or deionized water to the cup. Cap tightly, then shake to moisten the entire sample. Vigorously shake by hand or mechanical means for three minutes. Allow the sample to settle for a few minutes. Filter the extract using a filter syringe. You may also use Wattman No. 4 filter or a micro centrifuge. It is very important to collect a minimum of three milliliters of filtrate into the sample collection tube for accuracy of results. Dilute the sample filtrate one to 10 by mixing 900 microliters distilled or deionized water with 100 microliters sample filtrate in a clean sample collection tube. Mix well. Label this tube diluted filtrate. Your sample is now ready to test. Each Veritox Max for Xarelanone kit contains 48 red marked mixing wells, 48 clear antibody coated wells, five yellow labeled bottles of 0, 25, 75, 150, and 500 PPB Xarelanone controls, one blue labeled bottle of Xarelanone HRP conjugate solution, one green labeled bottle of K-Blue substrate solution, one red labeled bottle of Red Stop solution, one pink labeled bottle of high level diluent, one box max two aqueous extraction packets, and directions for use. Precautions. Do not use kit components beyond the expiration date. Do not run more than 24 microwells at a time. Follow proper pipetting techniques, including the proper priming of tips. The substrate should be clear. Discard if it has turned dark blue. Only pour the needed volume of substrate into a reagent boat. Cover the reagent boat to keep the substrate protected from light until it is needed. Antibody wells should be kept in the foil pouch until needed. Remove one red marked mixing well for each sample to be tested. 
plus five red marked mixing wells for the controls. Remove an equal number of clear antibody coated wells and place both strips in the well holder. Put the controls in order from the lowest to the highest concentrations. Gently swirl prior to use. Using a new tip each time, place 100 microliters of the controls and samples into the appropriate wells. Pour the needed amount of conjugate into a clean reagent boat. Using the 12-channel pipetter, prime and pipette 100 microliters of conjugate into each red-marked well. Check to be sure there are no air bubbles and the tip is fully loaded. Mix the conjugate and samples and the red-marked wells by carefully pipetting up and down five times. Draw up 100 microliters making sure no bubbles are present in any of the tips. Transfer 100 microliters of sample into the clear antibody wells. Start a timer set for 10 minutes. During the first 30 seconds of the room temperature incubation, it is very important that you mix the wells vigorously by sliding the microwell holder back and forth on a flat surface without splashing the reagents from the well. Discard the red marked mixing wells. At the end of the 10 minute incubation, shake out the contents of the microwells. Fill the wells with distilled or deionized water and shake out. Repeat this step five times, then turn the wells upside down and tap them out on a paper towel until the remaining water is gone. Check for excess water or bubbles. If present, tap again to disperse. Do not put anything in the well or blow air into the well. Pour the needed volume of substrate from the green labeled bottle into a clean reagent boat. Using new tips on the 12 channel pipetter, prime and pipette 100 microliters of substrate into the clear microwells. Start a timer set for five minutes. During the first 30 seconds of the room temperature incubation, it is very important that you mix the wells vigorously by sliding the microwell holder back and forth on a flat surface without splashing the reagents from the well. Discard the remaining substrate. Do not pour back into the substrate bottle so that you do not contaminate the bottle. The liquid in the microwells should change from clear to a shade of blue. Pour the needed volume of red stop from the red labeled bottle into a clean reagent boat. At the end of the five minute incubation, using new tips on the 12 channel pipetter, add 100 microliters of red stop to the wells. This stops the reaction and ends the test. Mix by gently sliding the well holder back and forth. Ensure the liquid is homogeneous in color and you do not see any layering. You have up to 20 minutes to read the wells using the StatFax 4700 microwell reader or an equivalent microwell reader with a 650 nanometer filter. Strips read after 20 minutes will not give accurate results. Turn on the StatFax. Scroll to select the test, Xarelanone. Confirm the selection. Select the number of wells you want to read by pushing Number Wells, then press Select. Set the carrier to the first strip and place the microwell strip in the carrier with the zero control entering the reader first. Press Start. The reader will print out the receipt with quantitative values for controls and samples. The middle column is the absorbance of each well. The right-hand column shows the exact parts per billion of the controls and sample. Below the columns is the R value. This value must be 0.98 or higher to be a valid curve. If the value is less than 0.98, the curve is invalid and the test must be run again. Samples greater than 500 ppb need to be diluted and retested. Here is the protocol.
If you have any questions regarding the use of the StatFax Reader or Test Kit procedure, please contact your Neogen representative or technical services.